All right, lesson 4.5, solving exponential and logarithmic equations. So we'll, we'll do both exponential equations. We'll start with that one. Then we'll look at logarithmic equations. And then a few examples of, of most exponential equations. Now, section 4.6 and 4.7 are dedicated entirely to exponential equation and logarithmic equation applications, so word problems. So we talked in briefly, rather, in lesson 4.3, when logarithms were introduced, um, that one of the reasons we need logarithms is to be able to solve exponential equations, like this one, 2 to the x equals 5. There wasn't any kind of root we could, we could use any, we couldn't use any kind of root to get x by itself because square roots and cube roots cancel exponents. We need something to cancel bases, and that's logarithms. So we talked enough about that. Um, we're going to get more in detail now about using logarithms to solve these types of equations. So this is an exponential equation. It's a very basic one. We'll do some more complicated ones in a few minutes with some examples, but it's exponential equation because it has a base and the variable is the exponent. Now, step one is to isolate the exponential term. Oftentimes you may, you will see like a coefficient in front of the exponential, or there may be something outside of the function that's adding or subtracting afterwards that you would need to move to the other side. Point is you have to have the exponential term all by itself on one side of the equation before moving on to step two. Step two is to rewrite in logarithmic form. And that's when um, we practice that technique in section 4.3. That's essentially where you use a logarithm on both sides of the equation that's going to cancel out the base. And then step two is to solve for the variable. Now, oftentimes in the exponent, you won't just have a single variable. It may be something like x minus 2 or x squared plus 4. There's going to be some kind of a variable expression that you're going to have to solve for after you rewrite it in logarithmic form. So to see kind of these steps here with this equation, like I said, this is a very basic one. There is nothing to do for step one because the exponential term is already isolated. So step two here, using a logarithm on both sides, we would just use a log base two, log base two, because a log base two cancels a base two. And then you can rewrite the equation in exponential, rather in logarithmic form, x equals log base two. Of five. That's step two. Now step three is to solve for the variable. And like I said, quite often the exponent variable is going to be more of an expression rather than just a single variable. So you may have to add or subtract values over to the other side once you get to this step. Now we're done here. X equals log base two of five. This is the solution in what's called exact form. Log base two of five. The homework and or a test may ask also for the solution in approximate form, uh, in decimal form. And so that's where you would use the change of base formula. So the change of base formula is what we talked about in lesson 4.4, where you'd write it as log 5 divided by log 2 and type it into a calculator. And you would see that it's approximately 2.32. So let's now, or let's now start to look at a bit more complicated, and by more complicated, there's just a few extra steps. These are not terribly difficult equations to solve. It's just you will most likely be doing all three steps in order to solve for the variable. Okay. So for part A, First, you would want to recognize what the exponential term is, and it's the base with the variable exponent. So this is the exponential term, 3 to the x minus 1. This is what you would want to first isolate. So you would subtract 2 on both sides and write it as 3 to the x minus 1 now equals 5. So the exponential term is now isolated. Second step is to use a logarithm on both sides now to rewrite the equation in logarithmic form. So here you'd want to use log base 3 to cancel the base of 3. And so the exponential equation has now become an equation that involves logarithms. And 
And the reason that we do that is the variable at the beginning of the problem was an exponent. You cannot solve for a variable if it is an exponent. But once we go into logarithmic form, the variable is no longer an exponent. It's simply an expression x minus 1. There's no more base. It was canceled because of the logarithm. The final step now, step 3, is to solve for the variables by simply adding 1 to both sides. And we have x equals log base 3 of 5 plus 1. Now, one common mistake I see students make is adding or subtracting values to the, to the number that's inside of the logarithmic function. You see, log base 3 of 5, that 5 is inside the function. You cannot add or subtract or multiply numbers to it. Once it's inside the logarithm, it stays 5. And so that plus 1 just needs to be outside of the function. This would be called the exact form of the answer. If you need the decimal approximation, you would first use the change of base formula. So x equals log 5 divided by log 3 plus 1. And then you would type it into a calculator. And this would be approximately 2.46. Okay, part C, or rather part B, the exponential term here is the base e combined with the exponent 4x. So this is the exponential term e to the 4x. 2 is just a coefficient, so it's not part of the exponential term. In order to isolate this term, we need to get rid of this 2. So since it's a coefficient and it's multiplying, we do the opposite, which is dividing. So e to the 4x equals 15 halves. Now that the exponential term is isolated, you can use logarithms on either side. So in this case, we're going to use natural log because we have a base e. And then that transforms the equation into logarithmic form or an equation involving logarithms. But the variable is no longer in an exponent. The variable is just part of the expression 4x. And then for step 3, to solve for x, you can simply divide by 4. And we get x equals the natural log of 15 halves divided by 4. That's the exact form. Dex decimal approximation, you don't need change of base here because your calculator can do natural log. So you would simply type that into the calculator. Natural log of 15 halves divided by 4. And we get approximately 0.504. Okay, part C, the exponential term is here, 3 to the x plus 1. So we have a few other things here that need to be um, moved to the other side of the equation so that we can isolate this exponential term. Now you do have the option, if you wanted, you could distribute the 2 and then deal with it later after that. Or the beginning of the problem was what I would probably do to take care of is divide by 2. And I have 5 plus 3 to x plus 1 equals 50. And then we could subtract the 5. So now we have the equation with the exponential term isolated. 3 to the x plus 1 is isolated. So step 2 would be using logarithm on both sides. Log base 3 cancels that base of 3. So then we can rewrite the equation. As x plus 1 equals log base 3, 45. And then step 3, we would solve for the variable, subtracting 1 on either side. And we get x equals log base 3 of 45 minus 1. That would be our exact form. The decimal approximate, we would first need to write in uh, using change of base. So log 45 divided by log 3 minus 1. 
and that is approximately 2.46. Part D, go ahead and give it a go. Pause the video, see how far you can get. The exponential term is e, the base e, and then the exponent of 3 minus 5x. The 2 is just a coefficient, so the first thing that needs to happen is dividing the 2. Now that the exponential term is isolated, next step would be to use natural log. So you have 3 minus 5x is no longer an exponent. So we have 3 minus 5x equals natural log of 8. Now, next step would be to subtract 3. And remember, you cannot subtract the 3 from the 8. The 8 is inside of this logarithm function. So we have negative 5x equals the natural log of 8 minus 3. Last step, divide by 5, or divide by negative 5, rather. So we have x equals natural log of 8 minus 3 divided by negative 5. This would be the exact form of the answer. The decimal approximate to this is 0 0.184. Okay, these four examples that we have just done are very, very common types of exponential equations to solve. And they, for the most part, have all three steps of isolating the exponential term, using a logarithm on both sides, and then solving for the variable as the final step. There are some less common types of exponential equations. These two examples I'm showing you here use a technique that's called matching bases. And you actually do not need to use logarithms to solve these exponential equations as long as you can get matching bases on either side of the equal sign. So looking at this first one, the equation can be written as 10 to the 2x minus 3 equals 10 to the negative 1. See, 1 tenth, 1 over 10 is the same thing as 10 to the negative 1. And the important thing here is that the left side has a base of 10 and the right side has a base of 10. If both sides of the equation have a single exponential expression that has the same base, then you can use this, this idea that if 10 raised to this power is exactly the same thing as 10 raised to this power, the powers have to be exactly the same. See, if the bases are the same, and the equal sign means that the both sides of the equation are the same, then the exponents must also be the same, meaning that 2x minus 3 has to equal negative 1. So now you're solving just a linear equation. You're taking the bases out of it. Easy enough to solve if you add 3, and then divide by 2, you get x equals 1. This other one is just an illustration of the same thing. Um, we have an exponential expression with a base 10 here on the left side. We have an exponential expression with a base 10 on the right side. If 10 raised to this power is the same thing as 10 raised to this power, then the powers have to be equal or be the same. So 2x squared minus 3 must be the same as 9 minus x squared. And then we have a simple quadratic equation to solve. So add x squared to both sides, for example, and add 3 gives us 3x squared equals 12. Divide by 3, and we get x squared equals 4. Square root both sides, and we have x equals plus or minus 2. So these two types of equations are solved using the technique of matching bases. It only works 
if you have a single exponential expression on one side and a single exponential expression on the other side that has the same base. And then you simply create an equation using the exponents. The other type of exponential equation that's a little less common and it still does use logarithms, but it does not follow the same three steps of isolating the exponential term using a logarithm and so forth, is uh, an exponential equation that's considered to be what's called quadratic in form. So we have this equation here, e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 6 equals 0. And I want to directly compare that to an equation of x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. See this one here on the right can be solved using factoring techniques of x minus 3 and x plus 2 equals 0. And, and maybe you're seeing some resemblance between this and that. And, and here's the key. You would uh, this first term here write as e to the x squared. One of the properties of exponents uh, that you learn in Math 1010 is that when you have a power that's raised to another power, you multiply the powers. So e to the x raised to the second power, you would multiply these two powers together and get 2x. So anyway, you'd write it like that. We have e to the x squared minus e to the x minus 6 equals 0. And then you use a technique which is a little less common in a college algebra course, but uh, much more common in a, in a calculus course. It's called uh, making a substitution of variables. So if I let, and you can use any letter you want here, I'm just going to let, I'm just going to choose the um, variable u because it's a little more common. But I'm going to let u equal e to the x. So then all of these e to the x's is going to be replaced with u. So now we have u squared minus u minus 6 is equal to 0. Now compare this to this. Same equation, which can be solved using the same technique of factoring. So we can write this as u minus 3 and u plus 2 equals 0. And then solve u equals 3 and u equals negative 2. Now, the equation did not ask us to solve for u. The equation is asking us to solve for x right here. And so now once we've isolated u and solved for u, we need to go back and reverse the substitution here, we did the u is equal to e to the x. So now we need to rewrite u as e to the x. And we could say now that e to the x is equal to 3. And over here, e to the x is equal to negative 2. And now we have two separate exponential equations to solve. So to solve e to the x equals 3, we would use a natural log on both sides. And we have x equals natural log of 3. To solve e to the x equals negative 2, we would again use natural log on both sides. However, when you try to plug natural log of negative 2 into a calculator, you would get an error. And if you recall from our discussion in section 4.3, you cannot have negative values inside of a logarithm function. So this is undefined. So the only solution is this solution, x equals natural log of 3. Now that's the exact form. The approximate form, you would plug into your calculator and get about 1.1. So those are very, um, well, I wouldn't say rare. They happen from time. 
but these types of exponential equations that are quadratic in form aren't quite as common. All right. Logarithmic equations. Similar, similar steps, are actually, because exponential and logarithmic equations are, are similar. So we would start by isolating a single logarithm on one side of the equation. Once we have a single logarithm on one side of the equation, we can use a base on each side to cancel that logarithm. So essentially, we're writing it in exponential form, and then we solve for the variable. So as an example here, log base 2 of x minus 3 equals 5. The logarithmic term is the logarithm and the, the expression that's inside the logarithm. So this is what needs to be isolated. And it, it is not always isolated to begin with. You could have a coefficient in front of the logarithm. You may have some values after the logarithm that are adding or subtracting that you would need to move to the other side before isolating that logarithmic term. So, but here for part A, log base 2 of x minus 3 is already isolated, so we move on to step 2, which is using a base on both sides to cancel the logarithm, or rewriting this in exponential form. So if I want to cancel this logarithm, I would have to use a base of 2 on both sides. A base of 2 cancels a log base 2, leaving us with the equation x minus 3 equals 2 to the fifth power, which is x minus 3 equals 32. Now the final step 3 is to solve for the equation, or solve for the variable rather, which is adding 3 on both sides. So x equals 35. So try part B here, go ahead and pause the video. So the first step would be to isolate the logarithmic term, or to isolate the logarithm. So you need to get rid of this minus 8. So if you add 8, you have log base 3 of 4x equals 5. Now, we can't mess with this 4 until we get rid of the logarithm, because this 4 is inside of the logarithm. So the next step would be to rewrite an exponential form or to cancel the logarithm using a base, in this case a base of 3. The base 3 is going to cancel that logarithm, leaving us with the equation 4x equals 3 to the fifth power, or 4x equals 243. That's 3 to the fifth power, 243. Final step, divide them by 4, and x equals 243 over 4. All right, part C. If you want to give it a go, go ahead and pause the video. So we have a coefficient here that's in front of the logarithm. So we can't cancel this logarithm until we get rid of that coefficient. So divide by 2. Now you need to use a base on both sides to cancel the logarithm. Since this is natural log, you would use a base e. And then final step would be to subtract 3. So x equals e to the third minus 3 would be the exact form of the answer. If you wanted the approximation, scientific calculators do have an e button. So you would use that e button, type it in e, e cubed minus 3, and you get about 17.1. Okay, now part D, 
Um, this is actually quite common to have logarithmic equations that have more than one logarithm. And so if you, if you recall, if you have written the steps down, step one is to isolate a single logarithm on one side of the equation. You have to have a single logarithm on one side of the equation. So for part D, we have too many logarithms. You cannot solve an equation if you have multiple logarithms on one side of the equation. So what we need to do is use some techniques from section 4.4, combining or condensing logarithms. So you notice that these have the same base. These are both common logarithms. And there's a plus sign between the two, which means we can use the product property and condense this into a single logarithm by multiplying the terms together that are inside of them. So x, x plus 2 is going to multiply x minus 1. So your first step is to make and create a single logarithm on one side of the equation. Now step two is the same thing we've been doing in all of the other examples. Step two is to use a base on both sides to cancel the logarithm. So in this case, we'd use a base 10 because this is a common log. So we have x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 10. Now this is nothing more than a quadratic equation to solve. Quadratic equation, in order to solve a quadratic equation, it has to equal 0. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out using the distributive property, x squared plus x minus 2 equals 10. And then go ahead and subtract the 10. Now that the quadratic equation is equal to 0, you can solve by factoring. So we would have, uh, let's see, x plus 4 times x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 3. Now, uh, a very common and unfortunate mistake students make at this point is forgetting one important fact regarding logarithms. You cannot have a negative value inside of a logarithm. Now you gotta listen carefully to that. That does not necessarily mean that your solutions can't be negative. What it means is it cannot make a negative expression when you plug it in to, um, to a logarithm. So negative four, for example, negative four plus two is negative two. You cannot take the log of negative two, it's undefined. Same thing here, negative four minus one is negative five. Log of negative five is undefined. Now x equals three, three plus two is five. Log five is good. Three minus one is two, log two is also good. So three is okay. Three works in both logarithmic expressions. Negative four does not work. It cannot be considered a solution to this equation. There's a word for these types of quote unquote solutions that don't actually work as solutions. They're called extraneous. It's outside of the domain of this problem. So the only solution is x equals three. On an exam, if you circle both or if you don't if you do not cross out solutions that happen to be extraneous, you cannot get full points for your problem. So it's worth checking, especially when we're solving logarithmic equations, that you do not have extraneous solutions. Okay. Part E, we have lots and lots of logarithms going on. Um, nice thing is we only have one logarithm on the left, but we have two separate logarithms on the right. This isn't going to work. You cannot have multiple logarithms on the same side of the equation. You can have one logarithm on the left and one logarithm on the right. That's okay. You just can't have multiple logarithms on one side of the equation. So we need to do here what we did on the last problem. We need to condense that into a single logarithmic expression by using the product property. So now we have one logarithm on the left and one logarithm 
on the right. And this is similar to the technique that we discussed a few minutes ago in X, uh, in solving, let me get it up here. It was this one here, exponential equations that have the same base, you simply set the um, exponents equal to each other. We have a similar situation here with this type of problem. If you have a logarithm on each side that has the same base, log base five here equals log base five here, then you simply need to solve the equation um, that consists of the expressions inside the logarithm. Essentially what you would do is just use a base five on both sides and the logarithms cancel out. So you have x squared plus one equals x minus two times x plus three. And then you'd want to multiply the right side out. And then get, uh, get one side equal to zero. You have x equals seven. And it's, and it's it's never a bad idea just to qu quickly verify that you don't have an extraneous solution. So seven squared plus one that's fifty. It's a positive number, so it's good. Uh, seven minus two is five, so it's good there. And what I mean by checking is let's let's say for example our solution had been x equals one. Well, it's a positive number, but if you were to plug one in right here, one minus two is negative one, which doesn't work. It would have been extraneous, so it's 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 good to to just verify. Uh, here, seven plus three is ten. Well, that's good. So x equals seven. Looks like we're good. Okay. Now, last thing here, we'll, we'll get a, a little taste of some application of of using exponential and logarithmic equations to solve some real life applications. But like I said, section 4.6, 4.7 is dedicated more so to that. So just one quick example. We've already seen something like this continuously compounding, but we were using it to find the amount of a future, a future amount of an investment. We're gonna use it in a slightly different way now. So we have continuously compounding, so we know it's gonna use PERT, so future amount, is equal to principal times e to the rate times time. Principal investment the uh, rate is going to be 0.5 but what we're solving for is this question right here how long will it take? How long will it take is a question of time so we're solving, we're solving for t. And if you notice where t is, t is the variable that's an exponent. So that makes this an exponential equation. Now, in order to solve an equation, we can only have one unknown. So we have a value here for principal. We have a value for rate. We are solving for time. We can't solve an equation unless we know the value also for a, the future amount. But it says here how long is it going to take for the amount to double. So our future amount is just going to be forty thousand dollars. So a equals forty thousand dollars. That's that's the doubled amount. So forty thousand equals twenty thousand times e to the point zero five t. That's the equation that we're solving for. So we just use the techniques of solving exponential equations. We uh, we isolate the exponential term. So the exponential term is e to the 0 0.05t. This is the exponential term. To isolate it means getting rid of this 20,000 first. So divide by 20,000. And we get 2 equals e to the 0 0.05t. Now we use natural log on both sides. Natural log cancels the base e. 
and we have natural log of 2 equals 0 0.05 times t. And the final step to solve for t is to divide by 0 0.05. So the amount of time in years is natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.05. That's the exact form. But when we're solving an application problem, you're going to want to have this in terms of actual years. You're not going to say that, well, it's going to take natural log of 2 divided by 0.05 years. You're going to want to have a decimal approximate here. So this is a calculator. So the approximate is 13.86 years is how long it would take if you invested $20,000 into an account with 5% interest compounding continuously. It would take 13.86 years for that amount to double. So that should do it for lesson 4.5, solving exponential and logarithmic equations. So they have very similar steps. So again, here are the steps for logarithmic. You isolate a logarithm, you use a base on either side to cancel the logarithm, and then solve for the variable. There were a couple of these unique types of exponential equations here where you can get matching bases on either side, or you solve one that's quadratic in form. But for the most part, quadratic equation or exponential equations rather are solved using these three steps. Isolate the exponential term, use a logarithm on both sides to cancel the base, and then solve for the variable.